Hey. Nice. I've kind of fallen in love with this bumper sticker meme format where it'll say, keep honking, I'm listening to blank, where blank is some very specific, even esoteric piece of music or otherwise funny thing to be listening to in your car. And at the risk of taking the joke a bit too far, I recently decided to up the ante and put my real unfiltered musical preferences on display for the whole world to see. So I made a bumper sticker that shows what I'm actually listening to at any given moment. Okay, so it's obviously not a sticker. It's a full-on high-definition display. And I'm gonna spend the rest of my time here telling you exactly how I made it. I'm gonna start with the hardware because it's ultimately very simple. There are very few components actually inside this thing. Most importantly, there's a Raspberry Pi computer. There is the HDMI display itself, which I found on AliExpress for like 60 bucks, I think. And then there's this thing, but I'm gonna talk about this a bit more later. So here's how it all came together. All right, starting with power. Both the Raspberry Pi and display take five volts via micro USB, so I'm gonna grab two of these little breakout connectors. I'm also gonna need one of these buck converters to knock the 12 volts from the car battery down to the required five. With all that hooked up, I'm going to run a quick test with my power supply set to 12 volts and make sure everything fires up without any literal fire. And then I'll start putting it all together. I'm putting some electrical tape down on the back of the display where the Raspberry Pi is going to go. This is super important because there are a bunch of electrical connections on the back of the Pi that can short out when they make contact with a metal surface. Here I'm using a combination of double-sided tape and hot glue to keep everything in position. None of this would hold up to any serious force, but I actually don't want to couple anything too tightly at this point in case I need to move stuff. And plus, I'm about to wrap all this up with heat shrink. I found this giant two inch diameter heat shrink that is, by chance, the perfect size to fit all my components. So I'm going to stick some magnets on the corner of my display there and start sliding everything in. I'll hit it with the heat gun for a minute and then I'll cut out a window on the front so you can actually see the display. I start with a little tiny cut to make sure everything still works before putting all the effort in to cut it nicely. My cuts weren't perfect and I'll eventually need to seal up the edges with hot glue or something for weatherproofing, but it looks awesome from a distance and this was so, so, so much easier than designing an enclosure for all this. I did end up gorilla taping one more strong magnet to the back of the shrink wrap for security. Turns out there's really nowhere on the back of my car that's flat enough for all four corner magnets to sit well, so having a central magnet with a bit of flexibility helped a ton. Against my better judgment, I'm going to rip the panel off the lift gate of this car and I'm going to try to splice 12 volt power from back there. The power that runs the backup camera should only be hot when the car is running. I, so I, I don't want it to be hot all the time because then the Raspberry Pi is just gonna run all the time and drain the car battery when it's not on. So I only want it on when the car is on. So apparently I have to unscrew this. It should be the only screw. And then I pop these tabs off and then I have to just violently pull at the trim until this whole panel comes off. Ah, that bounced right off my forehead. There we go. 
Okay, I just yoinked this out of the backup camera. And when I was looking at the wiring diagrams, it said to look for purple and gray cable. That should be the 12 volts that's behind the ignition relay. I'm gonna try to splice the power off of this little cable here because I can replace this if I need to. I don't want it, this is like wired directly into the car. I don't wanna mess with that. Confirmed, not hot. Well, we're not running. Thirteen volts. I don't want thirteen volts. No, never mind. I can handle up to thirty volts, so thirteen is fine. Okay, we've added a nice little set of pigtails here to connect the bumper sticker. All right, let's see what happens when we turn it on. Hey, nice. So now I can just pop this little light out. And if I reach in here, here is my power cable. And I'm just gonna cut off the corner. I bought extras of these lights. I'm just gonna cut the corner off of one of them so I can keep the wire poking through all the time. So when I started this project, I knew I was going to need code to perform two jobs. I would need first to periodically fetch my now playing data from a streaming service, in my case Spotify, and two, I knew I would need to render the bumper sticker itself. So when you see that yellow screen with the black text, that's just a PNG image that gets rendered just before it's shown. Fortunately, I have discovered a tool that lets me do both of these things very easily in a single place. It's called Valtown, and I am obsessed with it right now. Valtown is a borderline magical platform where you can deploy little chunks of code, which they call vals, to run on a server somewhere. And you can configure it to be run manually by clicking a button. You can run it on a schedule. You can have it be triggered just by accessing a URL over the internet. There are a bunch of options, but the key is you don't have to worry about where that code is actually run or how to get it there. You just type your code into their beautiful web editor, hit save, and voila, you have a backend for your internet connected application. Vals are written in TypeScript and then executed on the Dino runtime, which means you get instant access to like a bajillion JavaScript libraries. The whole platform is incredible. They have a very generous free tier. Go check it out. Anyways, I made two valves for this project. The first one periodically goes and fetches my public profile on Last FM, and it scrapes that web page to get the details of the last song I was listening to. Now, I could have done this directly using Spotify's backend or even Last FM's official API, but I didn't want to tie this project to a specific streaming service. And frankly, I was lazy and didn't really want to deal with authentication. So the result is that this Val works with anybody's public profile, assuming they have Last.fm hooked up. And because Valtown feels so lightweight, I could change how this music fetching works at any time. My second Val uses a canvas library to lay out the bumper sticker using the data from the first and then it exports the entire thing as a PNG image. Now, it took a ton of trial and error to get the text to line up right, because song names can be arbitrarily long, but I was able to save a bunch of time up front by using Valtown's internal AI assistant, which they have named Townie. It didn't get the Val exactly right the first time, I had to change a few things, but it got me started with the library, and honestly, it was most of the way there. So with both of those done, I now have a single HTTP endpoint 
that hands me back a fully rendered bumper sticker image. And the rest is gonna be easy. I just had to hook up my Raspberry Pi to the display, write a quick script to periodically fetch the image and put it on screen. And then while I'm driving, I could just hotspot my phone so I have Wi-Fi everywhere. Done, right? I could have very easily stopped here, but I know myself well enough to know that eventually I would stop remembering to hotspot my phone, and then I would look at the display one day and I would say, eh, it's not really working anymore, and then I would just put it in storage. I liked this idea enough that I was determined to find a way to make it fully autonomous. And so enter this little guy. This is a particle boron development board, and it is specifically designed to connect hardware projects to the internet via a cellular connection. And it even comes with a free data plan. You don't get very much data to spend, but that's okay because it's designed for low bandwidth applications like remotely connecting sensor data or asset tracking. You just pay a reasonable price upfront for the hardware once, and you don't have to worry about setting up a contract with one of the major carriers. Unfortunately, I couldn't just swap this particle board in for the Raspberry Pi. As far as I can tell, the Pi is still the smallest and cheapest way to add high def HDMI output to a hardware project. I don't think I could drive my display at all with this board, and even if I could, like I said before, it's super low bandwidth, so transferring images is kind of out of the question. I would burn through that data plan almost immediately. And this is where Valtown blew my mind all over again. I realized that because it's built on top of Dino, I could actually download my Vals and run them on my Raspberry Pi locally using a build of Dino meant for the Raspberry Pi. I had to change maybe two lines of code, but after that, I just fed Dino the URL of my Val, and in no time, I was rendering the bumper sticker images right on the Pi itself. So in the end, I have the particle board fetching only the song and artist data from my first Val, passing that to the Raspberry Pi over Bluetooth. Did I mention it has Bluetooth built in? And then the bumper sticker gets rendered right on the Pi and displayed on screen. This does introduce an extra step, and with that, an extra potential point of failure, but because each component in my system has such a clear and simple role, I'm optimistic that it'll hold up over time. I think if anything's gonna ruin my fun here, it's most likely going to be weather. So if you have any weatherproofing tips, let me know. I'm also a little bit concerned that it's going to get stolen, or at least someone's gonna try to steal it. I wrote a little note on the back that says, if you try to steal this, you're not gonna be able to get it to work. So I don't know. And then finally, I think it's entirely possible that the magnets might fall off, but I am determined to leave the bumper sticker on the car as long as possible, and I promise I will report back if and when it disappears for some reason. I think my camera's about to overheat, so that's all I'm gonna cover today. I will be sure to leave some links with some more specific build info in the description below. I appreciate you watching this far and hopefully we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.